There are many accessories that claim to reduce vibrations in equipment. Some, like spikes, are questionable, others do have positive influence. And where loudspeaker isolators are concerned, Stack Audio is my favourite. And they now introduce a product for electronics. I have reviewed a number of loudspeaker isolators, see my playlist. They were all based on the spring and damper concept, just like the suspension of a car. And they all did as promised, some more than others. And then Stack Audio asked if I would be interested in reviewing the OVA speaker isolators. They work quite differently. Simply put, they are aluminium pucks with two to five internal cells that are filled with proprietary particles. It is based on the phenomenon of particle impact damping. Stack Audio compares it to throwing a golf ball in a sand pit. It doesn't bounce but lies dead right away. The kinetic energy is transformed into heat by the sand. In the same way, the particles in the cells transform the minute movements of the loudspeaker cabinet into minute amounts of heat. And where the spring and damper system all allow for a small movement of the loudspeaker cabinet, the over isolators form a solid connection to the floor, by either being placed directly on the solid floor or with spikes attached through the carpet on the solid floor. That by the way is the only function spikes can have, making contact to a solid floor when speakers are placed on a carpet. If you then know that in a 100 mm diameter driver a 5 kHz signal at 40 dB SPL at 1 meter will cause a cone movement of 0.01 microns, you see the benefit of having a solid connection to the floor, but also of damping loudspeaker cabinet vibrations. Well, that's a theory, but I can tell you that practice proves the theory very convincingly. I happily use AUVAS in my reference setup 1 for some time now. See my review. It had occurred to me that this technology could also be used for equipment such as CD players and streamers, but I wondered if the mass of the puck would be too high to conduct the vibrations to the particle cells and to eliminate the vibrations. The mass of digital players, DACs and amplifiers is usually clearly less than that of loudspeakers, and they are normally placed on shelves which are naturally smaller and less rigid than floors, and therefore probably vibrate more and differently than floors. Of course the size, thickness and density of the material determines the amplitude and the main frequency of vibrations that the shelf can conduct. But since it has no medium to convert motion into heat, there will always be some vibration. At best they will be minute. On the other hand, speaker chassis must be firmly fixed in the room to avoid distortion and that is not the case with electronics. I suppose that it has led to a different approach in applying the AUVA technology to electronics. Some electronic and electrical components in audio equipment are sensitive to vibration, like the all-important quartz crystal that controls timing in digital audio equipment. Vibrations cause jitter and we don't want that, certainly not in a DAC. But if the streamer is the master clock, as with AES3 and I2S, its clock will also have effect. Capacitors can also be microphonic, which will affect the voltage lines. When the voltage lines vary, so will the flip-flops, buffer chips and DAC chips. And even potentiometers used for volume control, balance and tone control when present are sensitive to vibration. Don't forget transformers, which are often wrapped in damping material to prevent vibrations. And if any of these components are already in play, imagine what happens when they all have impact. Naturally, the over particle impact damping is applied, this time in a smaller puck resulting in a lower mass. And there is only one over cell. It absorbs vibrations from the equipment it supports. 
but in the lower part of the puck is a custom silicone absorber that isolates the equipment from the shelf it sits on. Since it's a spring and damper system that must be matched to mass, there are three versions. CSA1 for 0 to 4 kilo per isolator, CSA2 for 4 to 10 kilo per isolator and CSA3 for 10 to 15 kilos per isolator. You can use three or four isolators per device and choose the right version. Divide the weight of your device by three or four. The Grim Audio player weighs 4.5 kilos, so if you wanted to use three isolators, it would be 1.5 kilo per isolator, so the CSA1. If using four isolators, that would be slightly over 1.1 kilo, and again the CSA1. They are available as sets of three or four and multiples thereof. The hi-fi component should be placed on three or four isolators. Whether you use three or four depends on practical considerations. Three isolators always ensure an even weight distribution across all three. Using four may not do that if the shelf isn't completely flat. On the other hand, especially with lightweight equipment, three isolators can be inconvenient when you need to operate a device such as pressing a button. This may even be the case when four isolators are used. In that case you can use the thin rubber discs that come with each kit. Slightly less optimal because you want the best contact between the device and the isolators. And there are other considerations such as where to place the isolators. In many cases the feet of the device restrict the placement of the isolators, but that is mainly for aesthetic reasons. After some experimentation I found that it worked best to have the isolators close to the front, rear or side panels and place so that both the bottom plate and the front, back or side panel rest on the isolators. On the Grim Audio I used four, on the Core Dave DAC, MyTech Brooklyn and Air Acoustics AX520 amp I use three. I rarely operate these devices directly with the controls. They are all controlled remotely by the programmable Logitech Harmony Elite remote which is sadly discontinued like all Harmony products. It has been a while since it took me so long to finish the listening test. Not because it was hard to hear the improvements, not at all, but since I received two sets of Alva EQs, a set of four CSA1s and a set of four CSA3s, I wanted to compare all possibilities. No isolators, isolators under the Grim player, under the Court DAC, under the Air Amp, under the Grim player and the Air Amp and under the Court DAC and Air Amp. And I experimented with three and four isolators placed in different ways. The location of the isolators turned out not to be too critical. I preferred, as mentioned before, placement so that there is a direct contact between the bottom plate and the side front of back panel. This time I started listening in my reference set of 1A, where the Grim Audio Mu1 is connected to the Core Dave using the Network Acoustics Muon Digital XLR cable. Both the Grim and the cord are powered through the Transparent Power Isolator 8. The power cords are by crystal cable. The Grim is connected to the Zixel GS1900-10HB switch and is filtered by the Network Acoustics Muon Pro. See about my reference setups May 2023 for more info on the network setup. The balanced Analog outputs of the Core Dave are connected to the Air Acoustics AX520 amplifier over Grim Audio SQM XLR cables. The amp powers the PMC FAC12 signature loudspeakers on Stack Audio over 70 isolators and are connected over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The equipment was placed on a Creative Trend 3 rack. Once a device is on Alva EQs, magic happens. I thought my setup 1A really projected 99% of the sound quality in the audio file I was playing. But of course there will be even more information 
once the last remaining artifacts have disappeared due to small vibrations. Although perhaps the last remaining may not seem correct either. What happens? Focus improved. Time resolution further improved, resulting in a tightening of the deep bass, a very deep, wide and immersive stereo image, shocking microdynamics, sometimes literally, and great pace and rhythm. It didn't really matter if the isolators were under the grim player, the core DAC or the air amp, but using both the grim player and the air amp gave an even better result. There was another reason why testing took so long. You really keep listening when there is an improvement like that. The often used expression is that it sounded like a veil being removed. But the improvements were such that I could never have foreseen. And you wonder how many more fails there could be. To see to what degree the OVA EQ isolators improve the sound quality or more affordable equipment, I used the trusted MyTech Brooklyn DAC in my setup 1B. It was fed the digital signal from the Magna Mano MK3 Farad streamers over the Neutric AES EBU to SPDIF converter and a 0.5 meter network acoustics BNC cable. This time I didn't use the Ferrum Hipsus power supply since I wanted to know the improvement on the standard DAC. The Magna Mano was connected to the Zissel GS1900-10HB switch of the network acoustics Eno filter. The balanced analog outputs of the MyTec are connected to the Air Acoustics AX520 amplifier over Grim Audio SQM XLR cables. It drives the PMC FAC12 signature loudspeakers on stack audio over 70 isolators and connected over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The equipment was placed on a Creative Trend 3 rack. The OVA EQs worked equally good below the MyTech. I kept the ones under the amp in place during this test. There again was a clear improvement, like there was with both the Grim Player and the Chord DAC. It's amazing how, for instance, a snare can bite more and can be placed with more precision. There was no difference between three or four isolators and they were placed near the sides on the rear and near the front in between the rubber feet. I thought that the patent pending OVA technology could have a positive effect on electronics too. It needed a hybrid solution with the vibration dissipation compound, but I hadn't foreseen this result. A set of three can already be had for 176 euros, a set of four will set you back 232 euros including VAT, excluding shipping. To my country shipping is 12 euros, so it's very affordable and comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. I review many good products, but occasionally there is a product that blows me away. This is such a product and for once it's affordable too. My setup one has new feet. And that brings me to the end of this video. See you next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Nowadays my videos can be watched one week earlier and commercial free at Patreon for only a small fee of one dollar or equal in other currency per calendar month. See the link in the description. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.